a John, a, 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 a Jane, we'd love you to also stand here and we just want to say to you, thank you so much for receiving us in your lives and being such a blessing to us and we just want to pray for you. you. Yes, and John, feel free, whatever the Lord lays in your heart. He has become a mentor or whatever to me, I don't know what he is, uh. my boss. <laughs> 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 yes, and what a privilege to just submit our lives to, to special people. Let's come as an Afrikaans, steek your hand out. Yes. Oh, Father, thank you so much for who you are. And thank you, Lord, that you bring people together for a greater cause, for something much greater than we initially understand. And thank you so much for special people that you have brought into, not only to Irina and my life, but also to this family, this church's lives. Thank you for your input that you use to give through their lives into our lives. And we receive today. We receive a prophet in the name of the prophet, as your word says. And Lord, I thank you that we will receive the benefit of this prophet. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Yes. Amen. I have not heard that the scripture is in Matthias 10, verse 41, which says, as we prophet ontvang in the name of the prophet, ontvang ons the loon of the prophet. Now, I don't know what is his loon, what is his salaris. Nie. Dit is nie wat het sê nie, die ek jou ook nie. Dit beteken die Engels sê dit so mooi, we receive the benefit of the prophet. Met ander woorde, dit wat die Heere oor baie, baie jare, dier pijn, dier moeilike tye en dier openbaring en alles in hulle levens inbeleed, as die koosbare vandag is, ons hoef nie daar dier te gaan nie, hulle het klaar dier te, te gaan maas. Ons hierdie bediening ontvang vandag, ontvang ons alles wat hulle dier moeilike tye by mekaar gemaakt het. So dit is nogal nice om dit te hoor. Nee. So dan wil ek jy my moedig en sê, maak somme oop jylle hart om te ontvang. Yes. Dank u, Etien. Ja. Vir hulle gister gesê, jylle sal my Engels beter verstaan as wat my Afrikaans vir jylle sal kan uh, verduidelik. So I'm going to speak in English <laughs> and I hope that's alright. I'll try to keep it, um, I, I, I've not been a complicated sort of person. As many of you know, I, I studied medicine, so I was a medical doctor for 25 years. And uh, this was a significant month for us because uh, I started studying medicine 50 years ago. Now it would have been in February, I guess. Uh, and then had 25 years of that and then stepped out of, med- out of the medical world. I was a, a doctor. We worked on a mission hospital. And then, then I was a GP for 12 years in Port Elizabeth, which is now Kebecha. And um, <laughs> and um, we we then moved to uh, and then moved into the church full time. In fact, on the first of March, nineteen ninety six. That's so also twenty five years. So, yeah. And I met Jane fifty years ago. So, significant year for us. And it's, uh, but it, let me just say, it's a privilege to be here. It in by thank you. We we really we really appreciate the privilege, and and come to serve you. Um, I, I, really, I really, I want to, I want to encourage you, I want to strengthen you. Now we come as, as the believers, we are not alone, um, and and I bring with me, uh, you know, the greetings of Church of the Nations, which you're now part of, uh, and we have churches in probably about, or well, we have certainly influence and work into about 40 or 50 nations internationally now, um, and there are there, there are six of us. Uh, and now we're adding some others who form the council, the Apostolic Council of Church of the Nations that over, oversee it all. Uh, and I, you know, Jane and I look after it. We've got about 37 churches, I think, that we look after of this, and this is one. And our home base in Port Elizabeth is also one. And um, so it's just a joy to, to be with you. And so I'm, I'm coming with, uh, honestly, just, uh, can I put that out a bit more? I'm, just, I'm coming with a, um, just a, an encouragement for you this morning, and a, and I want to try and make some sense of w- where things are at the moment, um, and give you just a, a focus to bring your life back onto. Um, and I've, I just called it finding truth in the midst of chaos. 
So, uh, thanks, Serena. If we can just put that up. Will that thing work? Yeah, there we are. Finding truth in the midst of chaos. Because it feels like the world's gone mad. I don't know about to you, but to me it feels like it's gone mad. There's not a, there's not a government anywhere in the world, it seems, that's not in some kind of trouble. You know, the medical side of things, pharmaceutical industry, the, the, this virus, this COVID has caused chaos everywhere. We're in trouble. And I want to try and make some sense of, of that chaos and just give us an anchor to hold on to which will take us through this time and take us through this time and be with us forever because that's the reality. So I'm going to start off with John 18 verse 37. If we can pull that up. Okay, you may or might not see that clearly, but Pilate said to Jesus, this is when Jesus was being, uh, he was on, on trial before Pilate, just before his crucifixion. Pilate said to him, so you are a king. And Jesus answered, you say that I'm a king and for this purpose I was born and for this purpose I have come into the world to bear witness to the truth. Remember we're looking this morning at finding truth and Jesus said I've come to bear witness to the truth. And then he says everyone who is of the truth listens to my voice. So Pilate said to him what is truth? That's an incredible question. What is truth? And after he had said this, he went back outside to the Jews and told them, I find no guilt in him. So Pilate didn't wait for the answer. He just said, what is truth? And for me personally, through this COVID, it's now, it'll be a year now that since, we, since lockdown started. Through this time, for me, one of the greatest challenges has been, what is truth? Because the government will put out a statement or uh, Dr. Fauci in America will put out a statement and this one conflicts with that one and then this story comes and then that story comes and then no, the, this virus was here and then it was there and then it was from Wuhan and then no, they actually made it in America and then they sent it across and, and no, actually it's Bill Gates who started the whole thing. You know? And you, you've all heard the stories, okay? Um, and it's, it's concerning and so I've, I've battled to find truth I've really been searching for truth through this time, and it's almost impossible. So, like you're on my, on my phone, I've got, a, I've got news, I can t tune into the, well, I can get the news from News 24, I may not miss any of them, I've got ENCA, I've got BBC, I've got CNN, I've got Al Jazeera, I've got Fox, and then I've got Google, if those don't help me. But between all of them, if I want to have a particular answer I can go to one of them and so there are so many th sources of information but I don't know where the truth is I don't know what the source of actual truth is because it seems like the politicians still tell whatever story they have to in order to support what what they're doing um, and and the medical professions getting accused of the same thing and I've you know I've, I've what happened in the early parts of the COVID thing people would send me things and I remember the very first thing I got was, um, was a, a, a British guy, and I, we were chatting with Etienne about it last night, there's a British guy who, whose, whose name was Pastor Jonathan, I don't know what his surname was, very well spoken, very intellectual, in a, and he began to explain how this was not a virus at all. Uh, and he said, I'm, I'm speaking to you as, as your pastor, and I want you to know this is not a virus, this is 5G. 5G started in Wuhan and then went across to Italy and whatever else. And then he, he couldn't explain when I, you know, we began to ask, how did it get to Iran? Because Iran doesn't have 5G. But, but story after story after story, where's the truth? What is the truth? And when I, when I started looking, I, I realized I can find a slant on truth no matter which way I go. So... If I look at a particular, if I want a particular answer, I'll go to this news source. And if I want to get a different opinion, I'll get a, this news source. And it seems like people can change the story and they can give you evidence or whatever else. And often it's on political bias or whatever it is. And they're just opinions. And that's now become true, I think, for the vaccination. And I, I just felt as a, as a leader within Church of the Nations, I, I needed 
perhaps just try to give us some guidance as to where we go with the whole vaccination thing and with all of the stories and all of the things that are going on. Um, because can, you know, with my medical background, <laughs> I, I don't want to influence you only from the medical point of view because, because I trust medicine because I came through it. But I know that not everybody does. And so, and so how do we find the truth in the middle of all of that? Um, can the RNA vaccine that they've now produced, can that get into your brain and change your... Because you would have heard the stories, I'm sure. They go everywhere now because of internet. Can they change the way you think? Are they going to be able to follow you by satellite from out? And is it the mark of the beast? You know, all of those questions. I just want to try and give us some some background and some understanding of where it's all come from and, and what the devil is up to. Because I think there's been... When I was praying about and thinking about it, I, I, I just began to think about that Leviathan spirit. And I'm not saying... I don't want to make a big spooky thing out of this, but I think there's been a Leviathan spirit released. I think Satan's having a go at us. And the thing about the Leviathan spirit is this. It's a, it twists the truth. Um, I, I did some research on it just to, to try to understand what it, because it speaks about it in the Bible. And it was some kind of a mythical sea monster, um, or a, also known as the coiled one, okay, because of the twisting, or the fleeing serpent, also known as the dragon in the sea, or also known as the crocodile. And you know when a crocodile takes its prey, it grabs the buck or whatever it's getting like that, and then it twists. And it's that twisting that, that you know, destroys the, the animal. So the Leviathan spirit takes the, takes the truth and twists it. And between the different newscasters and everything else and all of the stuff we're getting, I think somewhere Satan's having a go at us and trying to get us unfocused from what is truth and he's causing chaos. Um, and so... The orderliness of what we knew is being destroyed. And somewhere, you know, he's having a go at us. Now, I'm not afraid of the Leviathan spirit because the word is clear that we break the powers of darkness through prayer. Our weapons of warfare are not carnal. So we pray against these things, we break them. God is the one who will destroy that and prayer is our weapon. But... Coming back to the media, the, the newscasts and the whatever you hear on TV, and they, they'll always they'll do an interview and they will interview in favor of their argument or their bias. And we need to understand that. So whatever you're listening to and wherever you're going, it's taking you down a, down a line. Now, I followed the, the run-up to the American election quite clearly. We've got three churches that belong to our cluster that, that are in America and we have a daughter and a son-in-law there. Um, and so, you know, we, we follow the, the American thing, and obviously American politics affects the rest of the world. If I wanted to hear what the Republicans were saying, then I would go to Fox News, and they would give me an incredible bias in, in terms of giving me news about Trump and what, you know, the, the Republicans were saying. But if I wanted to know the opposite side, then I'd go to CNN. And you hear a completely different story. And the hatred between the two was unbelievable. And it's like that truth has been so twisted, you don't know what is truth. Um, and Trump still says he has been, you know, he was robbed of the election. And where is, you know, this chaos, this chaos. And, and so we, as Christians, we get caught up in this. And in America, the Christians are divided. You know, some are with the Democrats, some are with the Republicans. They hate each other. How, how did it get to that? Um, and then, you know, you can then... It, it's frightening because they, you can be taken down a, a line with argument when you listen to something. If you go to BBC, they were all... It was all Brexit last year, as you remember. Um, and then, then you'll, you'll hear arguments about the economy and about global warming and about race or religion or... You know, so many different issues. And whatever viewpoint you want... You can find somebody to support you. Now, that's the danger. So you can be supported in your view by a particular, and you know that's true. 
if you are anti something, you will find somebody and some program and something somewhere that will, or someone will be able to give you a DVD or a teaching or an internet connection or a link somewhere that will give you what you want to hear. And I'm saying this morning, where's the truth? What is the truth? Because it seems opinions are not even based on evidence always. So, and, and I'll tell you why I say it's not based on evidence. Because there's an organization, it's quite popular in the United States, it's called the Flat Earth Society. And they, I hope there are no flat earthers here because I'm going to stand on your toes this morning. <laughs> but, but, but if you believe in a flat earth, which it seems for me almost impossible to believe. Our, our daughter has a, the, the, the lawyer that they have, this is not in South Africa, okay, just to put you at ease. Um, but the lawyer that they have is a, is a lawyer, bright, intelligent guy. He believes that the earth is flat and, and will argue that. Now, if you go into the, onto the internet and you check out Flat Earth Society, they have done experiments to prove that the earth is flat. And their own experiments prove that the earth is round. It's actually not round, it's oval if you want to split hairs. Okay, but, if, but, but at least it does this and this. Okay, I mean it's, okay, it's like a ball in shape. But, but their experiments that they did to prove that it was flat proved that it was round, but they never changed their opinion and they never stopped being part of the society. Now that's very interesting for me as a, as a human because it means that evidence doesn't always cause people to believe something different. And that's quite scary. So I was looking into the whole thing and there's a, there was an astrophysicist. Okay, it's a big, a big fat name. I'm not sure what they do exactly except astro is out there and physis, physics is involved. But he, he wrote this. He said, so the question isn't why do people believe in a flat earth but rather why do people believe in a conspiracy? And the answer is the same reason. It is always a lack of trust. And that's very interesting because I think that's a truth we need to understand. Because it applies to us when we begin to try to tell others about Jesus or we try to put our viewpoint of where we stand as Christians to others. Even if we can prove our story, they may not believe us because they don't trust us. And so in this world that we live in now, you, you can no longer just say to somebody, you, you better believe in Jesus because they don't, there's so many arguments against it. They need to watch your life and they need to trust you before you can even begin that discussion. All right, but many people don't trust the society around them and nor the representatives of that society. So the government's no longer trusted. The, the officials and representatives of people in, in positions of authority, even academics, the scientists, not trust. You watch how scientists are now being quoted as, okay, we're going to make this decision on this and this and this basis. And everyone says, oh, the scientists are lying, you know. Or th There's such a, a twisting of things. And the medical world's got involved in that as well. Um, and it's, it's, it's related to the vaccines. It seems like people don't believe the stories that the medical world is putting out about the vaccines. And I was just saying to somebody the other day, you know what, I, I trust, I, look, I come out of the medical world, okay, I, I, I'm, still, I'm still a registered doctor actually, but I, but I trust it and I'll tell you why, because they don't trust each other. So you cannot put a microchip into a vaccine and change people's thinking of, and, less, and somebody's going to spill the beans. Somebody in the medical profession somewhere is going to tell you, listen, these guys, are, they couldn't even quiet when Nixon had that Watergate thing in America. They were, all the officials said, nothing, we're not going to say a word, but it got out. How on earth are they going to manipulate the entire world and nobody says anything? You know, I mean, those are the questions I ask. I, I don't want to give you the answers. You, you, I'm, I'm trying to just stimulate your thinking as to what do you believe and how do we, you know, where do we go with this whole thing? So if you find yourself talking to a flat earther all right and and they apparently my daughter says this guy he just he's very convincing he believes absolutely what he believes in she says they can't talk it's just impossible he can't 
begin to talk about the round earth and a flat earth. If you, if you start and you find yourself in that situation, ask yourself, how can I build trust? Because it's trust that's been lost. And trust is linked to faith. And we need to understand it's been a, so it's been a big part of my challenge this last year. This thing that there's, there's a lack of trust in the truth and what we can find. Where did the virus come from? Who started it? Was it made in America? All of those questions. You know, I, don't, I don't want to try and answer all of those things today, but I, I've, I've got my views on these things, let me be honest, but I don't want to convince you that you need to take a vaccine or not. We came to the conclusion that we need to answer theological uh, questions. It's not possible for this to be the mark of the beast. Okay, because the mark of the beast is going to be on the forehead or on the hand. So I said to people, if they come at you with a big needle this size of my finger and they point it at your forehead, r- run away. Okay, Because maybe they're trying to get a, mo- <laughs> a nano chip in there somehow. But, but the little needle that goes in the arm, it's in the wrong place. And if you're going to serve the beast and take his mark, you have to submit yourself to the beast. And we didn't do that. So nobody can catch me unawares. I want to say that. Please be at peace. Jesus is our Lord and he's not going to allow you to suddenly be snapped away when you weren't watching or when you got fooled by something. That I believe with all of my heart. Okay. Whether you should take the vaccine or not, that we've just said ask your doctor. Okay. Get, it, get an informed con- you know, opinion about that. But I want to just talk about because of this whole truth thing that seems to be yeah, it's just gone wild. We were talking yesterday about ivermectin. I think because we're in a farming community, I, better, I need to talk about it. Um, one of the vets that back in PE said there are preservatives in ivermectin which are quite dangerous for humans. You know, I think you can damage your liver and your kidney. Now, I know there are a lot of people taking ivermectin, but the company, the people who make it, have said there is no evidence at all that it works. There is no effect on the virus whatsoever. They put a public statement out. It's been broadcast on BBC, but people are still taking it. Why? Because there's a faith that has been put in something, even though there's no evidence. Faith has been put in that. We need to understand that. It's very important we understand it, because why would people continue to do that? It's, it's the same... As, as I think, like the flat earth, there's no trust. They would rather trust what you know, the guy at the co-op says about it than what the company who make it say about it, because they don't trust the company, but they trust him because he's a friend. I, can, you, can you understand where I'm coming with it from this thing? We need to be so careful, because I think you can damage yourself. Um, now, I, just because of what's happened, I can't even... I can't even say, listen to me, trust me, I'm a doctor. Because <laughs> the medical profession, I don't think, is trusted anymore. Everybody thinks everybody's lying. All right, so, same applies to the politicians. The judicial system. I mean, just recently, when one of the, medi- one of the political parties in South Africa got a... Um, there was a court case, and they lost it. Then they, then they claimed the judicial system is also captured. It's like, what on earth? Where are we going? What's going on? So it's a sad day, and uh, it doesn't bode well for the future, because if we, if we can't trust anything, then where do we go? I want to just tell you another quick story before I move on to the truth, because there's good news. All right, don't, don't get distressed. There is great news that we have as believers. But um, there, there is a, on, on Netflix, there was a somebody advised us to have a look at a particular drama, or it's a, it's a kind of documentary drama, called uh, The Social Dilemma. If, if you're able to watch it, just watch it. The Social Dilemma, because again, I believe what is happening is that our minds are big, big industry, big tech, um, and yes, the politicians, I do think they're beginning to start to mold the minds of people the way they think they should go. And we Christians are a target for that as well. So this, this documentary called The Social Dilemma 
It was basically a whole lot of interviews of people who were involved in the original making of the uh, of the programs. They designed the programs Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, which are now covering the world and influencing the way the world thinks. And as I remember, some of them were, were right there at the start of those. And they said, like when they started Facebook, it was, a, it was a good purpose. But now they've built algorithms into there, which is something I don't particularly understand, but it's a clever way of watching everything that you do. So, when you, when, when you go into... And somebody told me the other day, um, Willie Crew actually told me the other day, he went to go and look for light fittings in, in Paul in the Cape. Went to go and look for light fittings for his, for his house. And he never opened his phone during that time. But when he got back home, he opened up his WhatsApps or whatever it was, and there the adverts were for, for lights. So they know where you've been. They're watching what you do. We know this. and I mean, they can watch my life. I've got nothing to hide. So... Come on, but um, but the concern is like for us within World Mission Center, which I'm involved with, we have people who can't be discovered. Who, if they are known where they are, will be locked up because of their Christian faith. So, so there there are dangers around that. Now, you know, they're watching, and they're beginning to influence what you think. So they begin they influence what you are buying and. They're influencing what you're thinking. Now, I'm telling you this story because it's important for us to understand that the truth is now beginning to be manipulated by these big tech companies. And I shared some of this message uh, on a Zoom preach that I did for our church in Chicago in the United States about two weeks ago. That's where my son-in-law is and my daughter. And, and on the Tuesday after I preached... Um, my daughter sent me a message and said, they've taken your message off. It was put up on YouTube, and something I said about COVID, they didn't like. So they just took it off. They appealed and said, what is it? What's, what, what did I... Because I'm not against the, the vaccine, as you've probably gathered. But they then went through it, and they said, okay, they'll put it back up again. But here's the thing. We as Christians are going to be manipulated and the truth that we believe can be pushed in a direction and what we need to say about the truth may be able to be shut down. Now I'm not saying that it's doing it already but I had the experience just two weeks ago, my message that I shared and what I'm sharing with you today would have been taken off YouTube like that because they don't want to hear the truth and I don't think they wanted to hear what I was saying about Facebook and Instagram and because they are manipulating and they are selling our information. The data about you is being sold. It's, a, it's huge money. Now, our, our problem is, as Christians, if we can no longer preach the truth, we're in trouble. And they then be, can begin to manipulate our minds. And so this truth is becoming more and more difficult to find. And they will steer us towards their truth. And more and more they will deny us the belief in God. I still have fantastic news for you because we've got the truth. We know the truth. His name is Jesus. And, and my comfort for you today and my encouragement to you today and the thing I want you to go home with today is He is the truth. And when everything else falls apart and everything else fails, you will find that he is the truth, he is the way, and there is no other answer for us. So when Pilate said to Jesus, he asked him, so, so what is truth? Pilate got up and walked out. He, he didn't get it. He didn't get it. Sitting before him that day was the truth, the one who said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. In John chapter eighteen thirty-seven, if we can pull that one up, thanks, Irina. Jesus said, I've come into the world to bear witness to the truth. Everyone who is of the truth listens to my voice. 
And if we lose the voice of Jesus, we're going to lose the way and we're going to lose the truth and life's going to fall apart. And Satan is busy working very hard to get us off track. I, I was trained scientifically, obviously, because of my medical background. But I realized I put my faith in science at a point in my life when I was trained. And most of you in here would probably at school or something that said, well, if you want to prove something, then here's how you prove it. You prove it by science. Do the experiment. But I've, I've shown you that the flat earth people don't believe the evidence. So we must understand that. That's a fundamental problem with humans. So at some point, I made a decision that science was the way to prove something as true. But please don't fall asleep now. This is the, the key point. All right. But I cannot prove to you that science is the way to prove something true. I had to make a faith step. I had to make a faith step to say, I will believe science proves this, this, and the next. And I made that way back. Now I think, well, that's, that's the way it was. Now, the same, exactly the same thing is true of our faith in Christ. At some point, way back, you had to have had some decision in your own heart that there is a God or there is no God. Okay, we, we all, whether you knew you made that decision or not, you did. Because people who say there is no God, they have no source of understanding what creation was. See, so, somewhere, somewhere we had to make that decision. There is a God or there is no God. If you believe there is no God, well then, then you have to... I think those people have got more faith than us, honestly. Because... How did the earth come to, to be? It was, it was a big bang. They got a big bang theory. Something went boom. And then all these things came about. Well, who do you think did that? No, that just happened. Well, you've got to believe in something with more faith than me to believe that we are sitting here today as a result of that big bang. And your thoughts are then the result of that accident, that big bang accident, what you're thinking who we are. It just makes no sense to me. But if I made that choice at the, in the background that there is no God, it's very difficult to argue out of that, isn't it? I mean, there's no God. End of story. Well, then they must mach on. You know, they must get on with their lives. And I, I, I have to build trust. They have to watch my life. They have to see that I am living in peace and in joy in the circumstances without having to turn to alcohol or something else or whatever. My peace comes from a source that is outside of me and his name is Jesus and they have to watch my life. But if I do believe in God, here, here is the good news for us as Christians. The only God who has ever revealed himself to mankind is our Lord. No, no other religion, doesn't matter what, whatever religion you think about, has, has never, there's never they, those gods have never revealed themselves. Um, you know, and you know what happened in the Bible, if you read about Baal, he fell over and smashed, and that was the end of it. But our God came in the form of the Lord Jesus Christ, and he revealed himself to us, and Jesus said, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. So, so we are so blessed as Christians because we have not only found the truth, we've seen the truth and we know him. I am the way, the truth and the life, Jesus said. So we have an all-powerful being who's behind the creation and the God of the universe is our God. Um, and Romans says this, and I'm going to just just so we can argue the thing from a, from a biblical point of view. Romans 1.18 says, for the, for the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who by their unrighteousness suppress, here we go, the truth. By unrighteousness they suppress the truth. 
The truth we have is being suppressed by unrighteousness. Okay, we need to understand that. For what can be known about God is plain to them because God has shown it to them. For his invisible attributes, namely his eternal power and divine nature, have been clearly perceived ever since the creation of the world in the things that have been made. So they are without excuse. Nobody can look around. That's what that word is saying and, and say there's no creator. You, you have to, out of your unrighteousness, make a declaration against God like that. So, in John chapter 17 and verse 13, Jesus says this. He says, but now I'm coming to you, and these things I speak in the world, that they may have my joy fulfilled in themselves. Let me say the joy that is in us as we know Jesus, as we grow close to him, that joy builds the trust that can help us to influence those around us. I have been given, sorry, I have given them, this is Jesus praying to his father. He says, I've given them, that's us, your word, and the world has hated them. Can, can I say we're going to face a persecution? The world, the world hates the Christians because of our standpoint on certain issues that are totally biblical and they're going to challenge us. So the world has hated them because they are not of the world just as I'm not of the world. I do not ask that you take them out of the world but that you keep them from the evil one. And so Lord we come against that Leviathan spirit. We, we, we declare in Jesus name we resist that spirit. They are not of the world, just as I'm not of the world. Sanctify them in the truth. Okay? Sanctify them in the truth. Your word is truth. As you sent me into the world, so I've sent them into the world. And for their sake, I consecrate myself that they also may be sanctified in truth. We have been sanctified in truth. Hold on to it. Hold on to the truth of the word. Hold on to Jesus because the world is trying to lie to us. It's trying to manipulate what we think and it's trying to block our, our Christian life uh, because the devil hates us. Bottom line. So, our belief in Jesus is a step of faith. Um, and we need, to, we need to remember that we took that step and hold on to it. Now we have to be careful that we don't allow arguments to break that faith. Because if you start listening to too many things that come against your faith, you start questioning it. I mean, I've, I've, known, I've known the Lord all my life. I've grown more and more close to Him. But, but I'll confess to you this morning because you need to know that even my mind gets attacked when I start reading some of the stuff that questions the Lord our Savior and begins to argue the secular argument against him. We walk by faith and not by sight. These, these are steps of faith we've taken. And you need to know my faith gets challenged and yours will be challenged. I just want to say, stand strong. Stand strong. Hold on to Jesus. He is the truth. And he will get us through no matter what. One of his final prayers that we've just read was the one that, that made the statement that you are sanctified in truth. He has actually sanctified us in the truth. Smith Wigglesworth, I don't know if you ever read, him, read about him, but he died, I think, in the 1940s. He was, a, he was an Englishman. He was, he was a plumber. Couldn't, he couldn't read when he got saved. His wife taught him how to read. And he always said, when he was asked, does he read the newspaper, he said, why would I read half the truth when I can read the whole truth? Um, now, I'm, I'm careful to say this because we must be informed. And so I'll, I'll listen to a number of newscasts and read widely before I try to find out what 
what I think is the truth that's going on in the world. I hold on to the truth, and I know that when I read the Bible, it is absolute truth, and that's what gets me through. But in the midst of all the fake, na- you know, the fake news and the and everything else that's going on, the truth, Jesus, is actually what will hold us together and give us the focus for the future and enable us to get through. Willie Crew, who's part of our cluster, so he's part of the cluster with us, as as this church is, um, he he runs World Mission Center. And he he was down near Grahamstown on a farm a couple of years ago, and a huge storm came up. Um, and he was talking to a mission school and uh, it was a graduation I think so he, he, he was talking to them and as he was talking the storm took the roof off the barn where they were sitting I mean it just it took the roof totally off nothing else got damaged just where they were nobody got hurt and he felt God said this to him he said when you see the chaos look for the harvest and I want, to, I want to give you this hope this morning as well you see we've got the truth we who are able to be stable and strong and full of joy and know where we're going in the midst of all this chaos we are able to build the trust with people they're able to look at your life and at my life I want people to look at my life and say where does he get that peace from where does he, where's the joy come? How, does he, how is he able to stand in the midst of this chaos? Because in the midst of the chaos, there is a harvest. It's the lost souls who have, at this point, got nothing else but the lies from the world to give them direction. And the direction's gone. And I think Satan thought, I'm going to put this Leviathan spirit in, confuse everybody, and win the battle. No, no. Satan, we declare today, our Lord Jesus Christ is the way, the truth, and the life. We resist that lying spirit. We resist that twisting Leviathan spirit. We come back to the truth because when, the, when we see the chaos, the Lord declares, I believe with all my heart, it's, a, it's an opinion I realize, but I believe it. When we see the chaos, the harvest is coming. Look for that harvest. We're going to see, as we come through this, we are going to see the church explode, I believe. The revival is coming because the world is lost, confused, and lacking in truth. John 1 verse 1. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God and all things were made through him and without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life and the life was the light of men. The light shines in the darkness and the darkness has not overcome it. It will not overcome that light. The darkness cannot ever. John 1.14 And the word became flesh and dwelt among us. And we have seen his glory, glory as of the only Son from the Father, full of grace and truth. For from his fullness we have all received grace upon grace. For the law was given through Moses, grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. No one has ever seen God, the only God who is at the Father's side. He, that is Jesus, Jesus has made him known. And that's where we find our source and that's where our comfort is. If you've seen me, you've seen the Father, Jesus said. So in the chaos, let's remember where our our anchor is, what's going to hold us through these days, through this time, because it's not over yet. And even when COVID is over, The chaos that's in the world will continue. You know, people will run away from one country and go to another to try and escape this. I want to say to you, wherever you go, 
there's problems, there's trouble because that's the reality. Last time he, he came as a baby. But let me just say this. This next time he comes, he's coming on a white horse with the armies of heaven. And he's going to, you know, he's going to appear and everything's going to be different. And I want to end with this because I want you to, I want you to be left with, a, with a, as I said, an anchor. But I also want to give you a picture in your mind now. I don't know where you are, but I know there are people here who are in chaos because of all sorts of things. Some may, may even have lost businesses and you know, incomes have been, jobs have, have gone. There, there's all sorts of stuff going on. When I started out as the pastor at Harvest, I stepped out of my medical profession, I told you, 20, it's now 25 years ago. It was on the it was a leap year, 29th of February, and I and the next day, I stepped into the church, and it was already by then quite a big church. And I and they said to me, "There's a pastors' meeting," <laughs> and I'd never been in one. Um, oh God, what have what have I done? What have, what have I? And I prayed that prayer. We pray so often God please help me and I prayed that this morning so if you got helped it was God this morning because we desperately desperately need him and I came to a point in my life as I was leading the church where I thought I can't do this this is chaos this is this church had it grew so fast and it grew so big. I didn't know what to do anymore. There was there were bills and stuff and things going on, and I said, God, I can't do this. And I was praying and I saw a picture in my mind, just a vision. I believe it was a vision from God, of the white horse, with the rider, and he came galloping into the picture. And he reached down, and he picked me up and put me on the back of the horse. And I've been there ever since, holding on to the rider with everything I've got. Holding on to the rider on the horse. And I can't see in front of me because he's in the way. Hallelujah. Because he knows where we're going. And he knows what has to be done. And I just have to hold on and not fall off the horse. And I want to say to you this morning, wherever you find yourself, whatever your condition in your situation just hold on revelation 19 i saw heaven open and behold a white horse the one sitting on it is called faithful and true and in righteousness he judges and makes war his eyes are like a flame of fire and on his head are many diadems and his name written that no one knows but himself and he's clothed in a robe dipped in blood and the name by which he is called is the word of god And the armies of heaven arrayed in fine linen, white and pure, were following him on white horses. And and then it says this, and I haven't put it up, but on his robe and on his thigh he has a name written, King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Let's get on the horse with him. Let's hold on. Because he is the way, the truth, and the life. And if you do that, I know, I have lived long enough to know, he will get us through and he will take us with him one day to be in eternity with him. And I'm going to ask if we can just pray in this moment. And I want to, I want to paint that picture again for you. Why don't you close your eyes and just imagine... Whatever the chaos you're in, whatever the needs you have at this time, whatever, whatever's distressing you. And I want, to, I want to give you a picture of the rider on the white horse with eyes of flaming fire and a name on his thigh, King of Kings and Lord of Lords. The, the ruler of the universe. And as he comes into your picture and into your life, 
He reaches out to you now and he, and he lifts you onto that horse. You may be so desperate that you need, a, you, need, you need to sit in front with him and have his arms hold you on that horse because you, you're not even able to hold on yourself anymore. And that's okay. But as we grow in maturity, he, he gives us the opportunity to sit on the back of the horse with him. Hold on. Hold on. And never, never let go. Lord Jesus, we thank you that you are the way, the truth, and the life. Thank you that you are our anchor. You will never let us slip through the worst chaos, through the biggest disasters that we can face in life. You will never, never let us go. And coming through this COVID, Lord, and coming through all the lies and the deceit and the confusion in the world and all the political agendas and everything else that's going on and all of the insecurities that the world would force on us, we stand secure in the knowledge Jesus Christ is Lord and He wins the battle forever. Amen.